Welcome back to this series on setting up Azure Synapse Link for Dataverse. Now, we've already gone through setting up the resource group, the workspace, and the storage account. So all that's in place. Now it's time for us to add the tables that we want to have synchronized. Uh, by default, it does not try to synchronize all tables. We really want to be selective about it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next here, and I'm presented with this list of tables. And I could go ahead and select the individual tables, but I wanted to point out some of the advanced settings that are there, just in case, just so you're aware that they are there. Um, if, you, if I choose the Advanced option at the top and click Show Advanced Settings, we'll see other options showing up, like Append Only. Now, this is not the default option, but it is available if you wanted, uh, for instance, as every time I create a new record or every time I modify a record, instead of updating that existing record in the storage account, I wanted to have it create a new copy of that. And so every change would require, result in a new record being added to that storage account. Um, it's going to increase the size of the storage dramatically, as well as increase the complexity of the uh, queries. But it does have, have some advantages in more advanced sort of querying and uh, uh, tracking. So uh, it's available to you. I wouldn't recommend it as your first go, go around. So probably leave it as the default to start with. But I did want to make you, make you aware that those are available. So I'm going to change that back to the default area and just undo that. And now I can go ahead and add the tables that I want to do. I can just individually pick them out, uh, scroll down that list, or I can uh, type in uh, campaigns. Yeah. yeah. Once I've selected all the tables that I want, I just hit save. And it's going to go ahead and set up the synchronization process back and forth. Uh, it's saving the late details and, and setting up the synchronization so they start moving over. Now, we'll say that this is where we can see, uh, if I look at manage tables, I can see that I can go back and add additional tables if I need them. Or if I just go here and say, uh, look, hit click on tables, I'll see the list of tables and I can see that the status can change. In this case, I've only have a very small amount of data, so it's queued up, but it's going to complete pretty quickly. Uh, there's initial syncing uh, in progress and active, and then as soon as I want to refresh it, probably uh, most of these will be done. Yeah, for a small data set, it's actually easy to get that done quickly. Um, again, I would probably recommend that if for your initial set, you choose some of the more core tables that you need, uh, probably excluding things that have huge volumes. If you do have huge volumes of like activities, um, any of those kind of transactional things, you might want to hold off those until after your first sync is in place, just so that you're not you can see the whole process complete, uh, and then you can kick off like a, an account an activity sync and go to lunch or something. But uh, that's probably a good way to do that. Now I will say that also if you're looking for some of your your custom feet tables to be added to this, and you're not seeing them in the selection when I go to the Manage Custom, and I don't see that custom table listed, you might go back and check the configuration of it. So here's an example table that I might be looking for. And if I go to the properties for that table and go to Advanced Options on that table and scroll down, there's an option here that needs to be checked. So I'll choose Track Changes. This option does need to be enabled for any tables that you want to be a part of the synchronization process. So if a table's not showing up in that list for you, go back and double check to make sure that track changes is enabled on that table. And that will allow it to then become part of the synchronization process, or at least it be selected for the synchronization process. Anyway, now that we've got those pieces in place and the synchronization has run, uh, I can at any point go back to this process um, and look at the details of what's there. This is the resource group, the ID. Some of these details are helpful if you ever have a support ticket. These are places to grab the details that you need uh, and then de additional details. But now that I've seen this in place and it's rolling, we're good. By the way, there is a couple of times where you'll see uh, things in the count. If there is a, uh, if the count is zero or if something hasn't changed recently, 
Uh, you might make sure that there's data in the table. I've had that happen a couple times where uh, the date there was no data in the table, so as a result, it would only partially set up the synchronization for that. But all that's kind of minor. Uh, start with your core tables, work your way out. The next video, we're going to talk about how to start querying those video, those uh, tables and get started on that. So go ahead and get started on that, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.